You watch an unboxing video, saw a Chanel bag. You put that Chanel bag on your Chanel wish list. You saved up, went to the Chanel store, bought that Chanel bag and felt like you're on top of the world. You thought you have finally arrived at your bag piece, but two months in, you came across another Chanel bag and you thought, wait a minute, maybe, just maybe, this is the unicorn bag. That was the cycle I repeated time and again for years. I think it's no secret that we humans get used to things. If you're lucky enough to win the lottery jackpot today, it's only normal to feel ecstatic. But a lot of lottery winners will tell you after a few months, their happiness level actually returned to what it was before that life-changing amount of money came into their lives. That obviously is an extreme example, but I think it really shows how with time, we all get accustomed to new things. Some of you know I used to love shopping, but thankfully minimalism came into my life and I started downsizing heavily. Even now, when I think of those things that I worked so hard to remove from my life and my wardrobe, I still find it really hard to believe that not too long before then, I desired those items so much and I still remember the happiness and the excitement right after I made the purchase. Somehow, after six months or a year, these things started to blend into the background and all I wanted to do was to get rid of them. I'm sure you'll agree that it's quite a contrast of emotions right there. Meanwhile, the shoes and the handbags in the Chanel and Louis Vuitton stores seemed more appealing than ever. I'm not sure if it was the intense lighting, the attentive service, the champagne, or my own desperation for a dopamine hit, but they just looked so much more attractive than the clutters I had accumulated in my own wardrobe. I think that very much applies to social media as well. Even when you have supposedly bought your dream bag, you might soon find yourself browsing and researching about the handbags other people are buying and unboxing. Perhaps you might even think, hmm, maybe I should have waited a bit longer and bought this new Chanel bag instead. Now that I create content myself, I can understand why social media can get so addictive because it's a highly curated platform. So let's say you're interested in a designer handbag and you start scrolling on Instagram because you want to picture how the bag would look on yourself. Lo and behold, this handbag looks absolutely amazing on every single picture you come across on Instagram. The thing is, these pictures are taken with the perfect lighting and the blogger might have taken some time to put together a nice outfit to complement the handbag. So you could say everything is working in the favor of this handbag that you're already itching to buy. So it's no surprise why our own Chanel doesn't look as nice as the Chanel in the store or on other people. And I'm speaking for myself as well because the things I show are usually the finished products. For example, a video that lasts 10 minutes might come across casual and effortless, but typically it takes hours of brainstorming filming and editing. And before I sit down in front of my camera, I would brush my hair, put on my makeup, wear a decent top, and tidy up the mess around me. What you don't see are the moments when I'm frustrated, tired, and generally cannot be bothered. Because in those moments, the last thing I want to do is to pick up my camera. My point is, it's so easy to overlook someone's personal struggles behind their smile. I mean, we all sometimes look at those beautiful people and their beautiful things, and we think their lives are perfect. We then unknowingly associate their happiness with their things. Before long, we might even impose that idea onto our own lives. I was certainly guilty of that. I remember telling myself, of course, I would be happy if I had the same handbag collection like hers or lived in the same big house like his or dressed in the same designer labels. It was as if I was always just one thing away from my happily ever after. I often talk about minimalism as a two and not the happy ending. In this case, minimalism has helped me to look at the same thing using a very different lens. Before minimalism, I used to look at my overflowing closet and said to myself, the reason I have nothing to wear is because I haven't found my perfect dress or my unicorn handbag. After minimalism, however, I realized the reason I was so distracted was because I had too much and it was distracting me from the things I actually enjoyed. If you follow minimalism, you'll hear a lot of people saying less is more. 
During my maximalist days, I used to think that statement was such a cliche. To be honest, I only came to believe it after doing some serious decluttering myself. For the first time in many years, I have more space, more mental clarity, more time for myself and my family, and more appreciation for everything. By choosing to focus my attention on my blessings, I stopped being controlled by my own insecurity and self-doubt. And I realized I can just be myself. So I stopped chasing new things to prove anything. I think minimalism is something you have to experience yourself to know how life-changing it can actually be. I remember when I first heard about minimalism years ago, I was both skeptical and judgmental because it just sounded too good to be true and honestly, a bit overrated as well. Today, I feel nothing but thankful that minimalism has given me a new filter to look at life. At the end of the day, the kind of experiences we have very much depends on the way we look at them. And this is perfectly portrayed in the book I read recently. In the art of being brilliant, an elderly man found some journals in his attic, some of which were his own, others belonged to his son, Jimmy. Flipping through the pages, he found an entry on his journal where he wrote, when fishing with Jimmy, wasted the whole day, caught nothing. But you know what's on Jimmy's entry on the same day 30 years ago? Jimmy put down, when fishing with my dad today, best day of my life. This story really touched my heart because it feels so relatable and so close to home. I used to go through life focusing on what was lacking. When my life was already so abundant, I just needed to change my filter. And minimalism for me is that perfect filter I was looking for. Some of you might be wondering, do I ever feel like shopping or buying anything? Yes, I do. I'm the kind of minimalist who enjoys nice things. I still really enjoy my bags, shoes and jewelry, but I no longer shop in the fast fashion manner. Designer or not, every time I'm interested in something now, I wait. Waiting means allowing myself the time to do research, compare prices, and most importantly, to see if I really want or need this item. Now, it's quite true that you might sometimes end up missing that limited edition Chanel or that once in a lifetime discount, but nothing feels more liberating than taking control of your own spendings. In time, you will notice when you do bring home a Chanel, it is because you love it not because everyone else has one. Whether if you are active on social media or not, unless if you live in complete isolation, you will always come across newer, shinier and better things. While we have no control over these external events, we do have a say in our decisions and reactions. Just because someone else has a new and beautiful Chanel, it doesn't make your own Chanel less amazing. It really is possible to admire new things while appreciating what you have. For me, slow buying has helped to filter out a lot of the unhealthy shopping behaviors, such as FOMO, emotional spending, and impulsive shopping. I can't imagine what life would have looked like now if I continued shopping the way I was. This is why I really enjoy making this kind of content. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. That's the best way to support this channel. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you soon.